Hi guys and welcome back to Pass and Move. For today's epi episode, we are back with the Live Liverpool series, of course, and a game against Galatasaray in the Champions League. Now, of course, uh, we've switched some things around. Uh, normally, I don't show cup competition games until they are, um, you know, uh, we actually meet the board expectations. So I think uh, the board expect us to just get into the quarterfinals. It's still the group stages, but I just felt like uh, these. Um, the game that we promised to show you, which I think was the Leicester one here, uh, and the other games that we could have shown you during the month of October, didn't seem too important. It's still very much the early st early stages of the game, uh, or the season rather, and uh, I think this season, if it's going to be our last season, might, might as well make sense to break our rule and just show you some uh, important fixtures, uh, even if we haven't met the expectations of the board just yet. So it's going to be Champions League here, Galatasaray. Uh, the only other two fixtures left in the month was Leicester and Leeds, so might as well show you this game here, Galatasaray, and uh, then we can move on and hopefully show you a different fixture. Probably next month in November will make sense to be back for Manchester United, but it depends on everything that goes down. So, uh, in terms of what happened since the last episode, the one we showed you was the Arsenal game, 6-1. managed to beat FCP or uh, Porto 1-0 uh, through an Alexander Lacazette goal in the 86th minute. Both Porto and West Brom very much played with uh, defensive uh, tactics. They tried to completely kill the game, you know, park the bus type of football, not even counter-attacking. And uh, uh, against uh, Porto, we managed to score in the 86th minute, finally, uh, to break them down by going into overload. West Brom, though, we couldn't do it. And as you can see, a lot of our defence and midfield players had decent ratings for the game, but it's actually our front four who very much so underperformed on that day. Away from home though, it reads as a decent result and uh, we managed to win against Millwall, uh, Lacazette and Kita both scoring in the second half. And uh, Millwall also playing very similar tactics, parking the ball type of football, parking the bus type of football. And uh, we still managed to break them down because you know they're probably a weaker team in comparison to the other two. So I'm pretty sure you saw the Premier League table uh, in the start of the episode, but we'll give you a clearer view here. Uh, we're in second place with just one point separating us between Manchester City, but the competition eight games have been played and it very much is still uh, As tight as possible. So we do have 16 points. We are in second place, which is a very decent position to be in uh, We've got some nice top goal scorers here some nice key players all around across the board um, but uh, you know, I think we're also the only undefeated team so far uh, in you know the season um, but at the same time, it's just crazy competitive and it means, you know, let's say we lost the next game, 16 points. If anyone from here, Tottenham onwards, won their game, we will suddenly find ourselves down to ninth place, possibly. So it's really not a secure position just yet. And we do have to continue winning and maintaining this goal difference, staying unbeaten and just get going on a crazy winning run. Because so far, these bunch of draws don't read too well for us. But anyways, that's a issue for another day. Today's all about the Champions League and so we are in first position with Valencia just behind us, a uh, level on points. And I think we only are headed on based on goal difference. Um, not even the goal difference itself, probably goals four or maybe results. I'm not sure how it works. But either way, it's not over yet. Only two games played. This is the third one. So the halfway point of the season makes it very important in terms of the Champions League season. And uh, especially with Galatasaray just one point behind us, a win is a must. So it's a very important fixture. And uh, we're not even expected to reach the quarterfinal, we're actually expected to reach the first knockout round. Um, so yeah, I think we can just go ahead and get into today's game. Uh, we have Lafont in goal as always, because he is our cup competition goalkeeper. Uh, Troupe is starting to form a, uh, a partnership with Salah. And uh, the first choice right back, who is normally Trent Alexander-Arnold, has just returned from injury. That's why his fitness is really poor. Uh, we've got the likes of Gomez and Wallet in central mid, uh, central defence. Um, actually, our first choice central defender, Virgil van Dijk, despite his good form as it shows here, 7.40. And average rating is really good as well. He's slotted into our side very comfortably. Uh, he's been suspended, not f from our team, but with his previous team. He, uh, I guess he got sent off for a red card, he's suspended for three games. I think this is the last game that he gets to miss out on. Uh, so Wallace gets a nod for today and he's going to want to continue his own good form. But yeah, Gomez is our first choice left uh, central defender. We've got left back Kieran Tierney. Uh, he's not actually our first choice, but Guilherme isn't in the best of form. And so Tierney takes over and he's been keeping up his own form himself and so he'll be starting today. Got Henderson and Keita who are both enjoying a good turn of events in terms of their form 
uh, since you know we made the tactical tweak both on sevens and above. Uh, unfortunately, that keeps out Georgina, who is in the poor form anyways, but also Chan outside of the squad entirely. Uh, but very capable players, of course. Salah and uh, James Rodriguez, Mane, as well as Lacazette make up our front four. Uh, Salah uh, is in good form, as always, and uh, enjoying his inside forward role again. Uh, James Rodriguez out of form and uh, has been disappointing since we switched to an attacking midfield uh, role. But unfortunately for us, it's either attacking midfielder or shadow striker. I'm pretty sure he's not going to enjoy that shadow striker role. But if need be, we might switch to it and see if that helps. Uh, but really, those are our only two options. Advanced playmaker, I'd love to play him in that role, but unfortunately, they don't really really overlap the same way um, you know uh, other uh, roles such as the attacking midfielder and the shadow striker roles do. Lacazette has also improved scoring eight goals he was, is the top goal scorer in our squad and he's enjoying the complete forward role once more. Let me try something though today if we go an advanced playmaker on attack ask him to move into chance can we tell him to get forward as well? We can maybe possibly try this for today's game and see if that helps us. If they get further forward, that means he might overlap. What does it say? Encourages to seek to make an impact on the game in advanced areas by increasing the number and rate of forward runs they make while still maintaining their place within the overall structure of the team. Well, that's fair enough. I think, technically, this tweak should help us and still get the best out of Hamas Rodriguez, who's shown himself to be a capable finisher. It's just that he's not enjoying the attacking midfielder role. So maybe this way we get more out of him. His role ability is already increased. And uh, let's see if that helps us, uh, if it makes our squad any better. But in that sense, we are kind of playing risky football by playing three different types of playmakers. Um, but let's see if it works today. I've never actually tried this. Let's give it a go. Get in. Get in. Players are warming up. and Which is actually just the front for the game warming up in case no one realised. Um, but uh, yeah, Galatasaray, even though they're at home, playing a defensive uh, formation, that doesn't mean defensive tactics, but it is a defensive formation with the 4-1-4-1. Uh, we're going to have to be smart with how we play. Uh, we do play very attacking fullbacks, and of course our flank players in general are just very attacking. Whereas themselves, they're probably playing just fullbacks, and they do have wide men who can possibly take advantage of this space here and this space here. They're playing defensive midfielder, which means almost entirely Hamas Rodriguez will be marked out of the game, so we're going to have to rely on Lacazette performing today. Today. and of course our midfielder you know the overlapping runs are going to be very crucial today uh, so let's see how that performs but very sturdy side if we can man mark Gomez out of the game who is their top goal scorer and uh, then we'll do a very good job because he can be isolated up top there by himself but anyways let's try and give this team talk quickly and get into things not necessarily favorite so we'll just go with the encouraging pundits have backed you up team talk and move along quickly we're not underdogs either, so it looks like uh, the match odds has put us at a very even uh, sort of uh, odds, which is, I suppose, a bit reasonable because uh, even though Galatasaray are a weaker team technically, uh, they are the ones at home and uh, in the Champions League that often gives you the advantage. Anyways, we kick off quite quickly. Lacazette finds Hamas Rodriguez, who is making the overlapping run, so it's good to see him do that. And uh, he does the playmaking thing, which is go out to Tierney and hopefully we can see more of that type of football. Uh, so that way we can play Hamas Rodriguez in his comfortable role and he can still do the overlapping runs we desperately crave. crave. He delivers, Mane shoots and he could have scored if it wasn't for the man on the line. That was an incredible piece of football. I didn't think that was going to happen. It looked like it was a poor cross or a set piece corner from Hamas Rodriguez. But uh, Mane had a very easy shot that could have gotten us our first goal. For some reason it's not considered as the... Um, First clear-cut chance of the game, sorry. Uh, and uh, it seems a bit weird, but uh, either way, Galatasaray survive. Mane has another chance to cause some damage, and uh, we're working our way forward. Galatasaray, as you can see, probably are playing defensive tactics. They're pressing us high, though, so I could give my players the option to pass into space. Trupe does that to Salah. Decent delivery into the box, but it's Mane, and he's missed again. And that is a half chance this time, which is, uh, I think, a little... A little bit not true, if that makes any sense, because I think he was in the box free and uh, he should be scoring from that position if you ask me. But either way, Salah spreads it to Keita, roaming playmaker, finds Lacazette really well. It's through to Mane though, and this time, as clear as day, he does score and it isn't offside. It shouldn't be, because the player has basically handed us 
that on a platter. So we're keeping possession better. Probably has to do with the amount of playmakers we have in the side. Um, but I think James Rodriguez already looks comfortable. It's very, very, very early, but he does look more comfortable. And uh, we do need to make the most of our star signing this summer. Lacazette probably would have found money through anyways, but it's good of Belhanda there to help us. Uh, unfortunately, Lacazette doesn't get the assist for that and uh, looks like he's having a bit of a struggle in the game today. I can, kinda, I can understand why he is facing a defensive midfielder as well as two centre-backs, of course the rest of the back line as well. But in general, when you do face uh, formations with a defensive midfielder, it normally means you don't need your striker to drop deep. But it's a core essential part of our tactic, so we do have to stick to it. He's a complete forward as well, so he does have freedom to move forward positions if he wants to. What a, what a set by... Uh, what a setup by Mane, but James Rodriguez, uh, arguably that is the second click out chance of the game and he's missed it, so that's disappointing. His overall play has been very good, but uh, that shot was incredibly poor and you can see why he's not a shadow striker or an attacking midfielder. Um, but considering how he's got numerous goals this season, you'd assume he would have gotten that one too. Highlight goes on until I said it goes on and it stopped now, but we are dominating the early stages so that's good to see we just need to dominate the scoreline as we always say as well my players are generally composed uh, Mane fired up he's uh, definitely improved in form since uh, we've got him tied up to a new contract as well as made the switch in role he wasn't really enjoying the rudimentor role I suppose uh, and uh, he's he's definitely improved so that's good to see we've also Galatasaray's body language is uh, suiting us a bit I mean a lot of them are composed but some of them are frustrated which kind of helps us because that means they lose their cool but here they don't lose their cool and there you go Galatasaray scoring it's 1-1 I talked about dominating the scoreline as well but Galatasaray found a way into the game after some poor defending in the box where we've let several men not just one get away from our markers look at this Who's here? You're absolutely guilty. Oh, it's not even letting me select. Just let me know who's guilty. Alright, apparently we don't get to know this. Um, but yeah, both Velasquez, Faguli, completely free of their man. And you have to wonder why there's one man on the post and not two. Is that. I haven't actually set, tactic, uh, set pieces. I never really do that. Um, but there's some strange decision making by. Whoever took up that role on themselves and Galatasaray are going again for Guli trying to cause some more damage and they are started the game poorly but they're looking really dangerous. Gomez has a really good clear cut chance which again the game doesn't consider it to be. Uh, but Galatasaray are less defensive than I gave them credit for. It looked like they were playing, you know, trying to break us, like come and try and break us down type of football, but they are more attacking than I thought. And these overlapping runs from central midfield are causing us some damage, so we have to be careful. Gomez free in the box again. My players are playing very dangerously. I think given how they try and close us down at every early opportunity, uh, it's probably why you know our possession slowly dropped for us from 60% to 48%. I think I'm going to start to have to tell my players... Um, to pass into space in the second half because that seems to make a bit more sense. I'm going to tell them I'm not happy. I'm not favourites though, so maybe I was a bit harsh there, but it was only on the calm. And there's a lot more to come from you guys. They're inspired, they're ready to walk through walls, so it seems to be not too bad of a team talk. The question is, is it enough to inspire them into a win? Gonna maybe a little bit stupidly go into attacking. I felt like Galatasaray growing into the game a bit too much to my liking. But if they are playing on counter attack, then they really will expose us. Poor ball. Uh, we just we give possession straight back to Galatasaray. You have to say maybe we're sp not. I'm not supposed to tell my players to. Oh my god. Okay, great. That was a goal, but it was offside, and that is just weird. Maybe the better thing to do is actually tell my players to be a bit smarter with possession because. Uh, the way we're lobbing the ball forward and giving it right back to them is not encouraging. And here you go, Galatasaray coming again from their own half. Are we going to win the ball high up the pitch? Nope, instead Gomez holds up well, finds his teammate. And it's back to Gomez again, the danger man. Come on, kill him. He's just held it up well for Galatasaray again. It's 3-2 for Guli. They're really exploiting the flanks here. 
Oh, come on, he shouldn't be getting that cross in. Henderson reads it well, though, and Tierney, who's guilty of letting that cross come into the box in the first place, finds Mane well, and it's our turn to attack. Hamas Rodriguez back to Keita. Poor ball. Mane does well to win it back, though. And we're off through... Well, could have been through from... Uh, Hamas Rodriguez through to Lacazette, that's poor. Henderson picks up the pieces again. Lacazette drops deep for and just goes for a crazy shot. That's not good. Even more evidence that we should be working the ball to the box a bit more. Uh, we've given, ha given Hamas Rodriguez plenty of time to enjoy his advanced playmaker role, but he's only putting in a 6.4, so he might just be having poor form rather than actual issues with his attacking midfield role. So we're going to go back to that because it makes more sense for us tactically anyways. We might see a bit more control in our midfield, but let's go ahead with this. Right, set piece chance. Henderson from out of the box, back to Keita. He's just gonna go by himself, nope, he goes to Hamas Rodriguez, and that highlight was absolutely pointless. You have to wonder what on earth the game was thinking. At least that's uh, the end of a series of Highlights where Galatasaray were looking seriously dangerous. All right, so time to make some substitutions. Hamas Rodriguez is definitely off for Pablo. Got Henderson in the yellow card, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, he's also a hint tired, but so is Nabi, and this game could very much, uh, you know, turn in our favor by taking off Nabi for Jorginho. So I'll keep things as is for now. Give him a hit, a bit more time. Um, but I'm not liking what I'm seeing for my players so far. This is not a vintage performance whatsoever. We're coming up to the 70th minute. We'll look to make some more substitutions. I think some tactical tweaks, to be honest. This time I will take off. I just, we're going to have to hope that Henderson's smart about his play. Bring on Georgino. i uh, got Chamberlain here as well as Divock Origi. I'm going to bring on Chamberlain for Salah. Move Chamberlain to the left wing and let's see if that makes any improvement bring them on I'm gonna tell my players to work ball into the box because we're not doing well in that sense just sort of lobbing it forward uh, this is gonna go right down to the wire all right let's make some more tactical tweaks let me try pass into space see what happens there we weren't really dribbling much, were we? We were just passing, so maybe if we dribble a bit more, that might help us. I don't think looking for overlaps was necessarily the problem. There's an immediate highlight after that tactical tweak. And it's gone in Galatasaray's favour. Thankfully, he heads it over. The game thinks that's a clear-cut chance, which is a bit debatable. I mean, he was free, but I think that's a much more difficult header than it looks. All right. Five minutes left, we just have to go for it at this point and hope that Galatasaray don't punish us. We're away from home, so point's not the end of the world. But I want all three, given the look of the rest of the table. Uh, so overload, take more risks, just get rid of everything else and see if that helps us. No. I'm not going to win it in the last minute, dramatically. Alright, so there is one more highlight before this game concludes and it is just because Carol got sent off. Well, that's not pleasing. I thought we were gonna go on and win it. I get why the game shows you this as a key highlight, but at the same time, at this point of the match, it just really doesn't matter because I thought we were gonna win, but it's just showing us a yellow card. And it's a 1-1 one -one draw. Um, Galatasaray, you could argue, might have deserved all three points, but uh, at the same time, some of our chances that I would consider our clear cut chances weren't even showing up on the screen, so that's a bit weird. But, anyways, uh, Galatasaray is supposed to be happier, I suppose. For me, I'm not too happy with that performance, but I already told my players off, and there isn't the option to say that's not good enough. We should have won the match, so I don't want to just say the same thing, which is I'm not happy. Just quickly move on, put the game behind us and uh, try and recover in the next Champions League fixture. But we are playing with fire at this rate. So yeah, uh, I think next month, of course, we are, in, I think, in October. So we like to show a game per month. In uh, November, there seem to be a de decent amount of fixtures that seem to be a bit important. 
Let's have a look now and see if, the, if I'm right or wrong. Uh, got Leicester and Leeds left in this month. Got Newcastle down to about West Ham. And there's a few, fair few important ones, but I think we will show back to back Manchester United and Everton games, both our rivals, both back to back, and it should make one hell of an episode. So that's it for today. If you did enjoy today's episode, of course, please do hit the like button and subscribe for more daily football manager 2018 content. And of course, I'd love to hear your comments uh, in, well, your thoughts in the comment section below. And uh, as always, guys, thank you all very, very much for watching.